Hello there everyone and welcome to another edition of Lydia's Crafty Corner with me Lydia in my little crafty corner. So today I'm going to be sharing with you how to do some masking techniques. I'm going to show you three ways that then enable you to stamp a background behind your stamped images. So it really gives a really cool look and this works well for one layer cards. So to start with I'm going to be using the Hope stamp set and I'm going to be stamping this a number of times to create three cards. So I've just got my card base into my Misty and I'm then going to place the solid layer for the first flower into place. Once this is in place, I'm then going to shut the lid on my Misty and then I'm going to ink this up. The first flower that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using the first layer is Dewdrops. So I'm going to ink this up really, really nicely and then I'm going to shut the lid on my Misty and there is the first layer complete on my first card. I'm then going to move on to my second card and this one I'm going to be doing an orange flower. So this one is the Sun Kissed Ink and this is going to be the first layer on this one. Next up is the Pink Pearl and this is going to be the Ready Coral flower. So I'm just going to pop that into place and there is all of the first layers complete. I'm then going to take the second layer for this flower. I'm going to line this up with the first layer onto my card base, shut the lid on my Misty and then I'm going to ink this one up. For this one I'm going to be using some Coral Bliss. Again I'm just going to pop the lid over, stamp this down and it gives me a really great crisp image. For the orange flower I'm then going to use orange cream for the second layer. Again just doing this really really quickly and you can create lots of cards in this way. Next up for the blue flower is the Aqualicious. Again I've just inked that up really nicely and then stamped that into place. I'm then going to take the second layer for the flower from the Hope stamp set, make sure it's all lined up perfectly and then I'm going to stamp this one. For this third layer I'm going to be using the Teal Cave for the blue flower and for the orange flower I'm going to be using the beautiful Autumn Blaze. It is becoming to be a little bit autumny now so this one really um, works with me at the minute. For the third layer for the red flower I'm then going to take the Heartbeat ink that up and then stamp that one down too. Then I'm going to take the fourth layer, I'm going to pop this into place, I'm just going to make sure it's in the right position, shut the lid on my Misty and then I'm going to ink this one up. For the red flower I am using the Vineyard Berry and I'm just going to pop that one in and I just love how these flowers look when they're stamped. For the orange flower I'm using the Fire Brick, stamp that one down <laughs> and then for the blue flower finally I'm going to use the galactic stream so I'm just going to pop that on and then that one is done there. I'm then going to do my masks so for the first mask I am going to take some sticky notes and I'm going to take the base layer for the flower that we've just stamped and I'm going to stamp that onto the sticky notes. I'm stamping it onto the bit that's got the sticky although it didn't matter in the end because my sticky notes are not that sticky anymore so I've just stamped that. You don't need to worry about it being perfect you just need the outline edge to be really stamped well. I'm then going to take a couple of the sticky notes. So I have three of them. I find that sta um, cutting three at once really saves time when you do need another mask. So all I'm doing is I'm cutting around this and I'm cutting slightly within the outside edge. This is going to give me a more of a perfect edge when I do my stamping later on. So I'm just going to go around that and then I have the first mask complete. For my second mask, I'm, again, I'm going to be using some sticky notes, but this time I'm using the coordinating die that goes with the flower from the Hope stamp set. And I'm just going to cut this out using my little mini blossom cutting machine. And once I have that cut, I then have my second masks. So you can see that they're slightly different sizes because the outline of the coordinating die is a little larger than the actual stamp. I'm then going to stamp in the centres of all of my flowers and I'm using the warm sunshine for the first layer of the centre and then for the second layer I have used the honey drizzle. For my third stamp, it's a little, um, third mask, sorry, it's a little bit differently. We're going to be using kind of an embossed resist. So to do this, I'm taking the base layer of that flower, I'm laying it directly over the stamped image that we've already done and then I'm going to be inking that up using some embossing ink. I do end up stamping this twice because I do find that for this technique I find that the two layers of ink work really really well rather than just one layer so that's why I am stamping it twice just to make sure that I've got a really great even layer of ink on that flower so I can then emboss it. 
I'm then going to be taking some crystal clear embossing ink and I'm just going to place that all over the embossed image, stamped image, sorry, and then I'm going to heat emboss it so it's nice and clear and shiny. I'm then going to take the center, so this is the bold center, the first layer of the center, ink that up. Again, I do do this twice to create a really solid look to the flower. So it does change the color of the flower slightly and it gives it a really shiny look as well. So you can see there that I'm just doing the center. I've added some more crystal clear embossing powder and then there we go. So now my mask on this flower is now complete and it's a permanent mask. Um, because I won't be removing this later on. I'm then going to stamp my leaves, so I've popped them into place, and I'm using Minty Mint for this. So on this embossed resist mask, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe the ink away that was on the flower to get rid of it. Then this one is the red flower, and I've just placed the mask from that we cut using the coordinating die over the flower, and I'm then going to stamp the leaves in place, again using the Misty Mist. This one is the blue flower and you can see a little bit of that blue flower is popping around the edge of that fuzzy cut mask, but it doesn't matter. It's going to work really, really well. And in fact, it works a little bit better. Once I've stamped all of the first layer of the leaves, I'm then going to move on to the second layer using Sweet Leaf Ink. And I'm just going to do this in exactly the same way. And as you can see, once I finish, you can then remove the masks off these leaves if you would wish. I'm then going to move on to masking the leaves. So I'm moving back on to my orange flower, the one with the emboss resist, and I'm going to do exactly the same technique as I did with the flower for the leaves. So I'm creating a mask for these ones now. So I've just taken the base layer of the leaf, popped it in position, and then I'm inking it up with the embossing ink and then going to heat emboss it again with the crystal clear embossing powder from Ulta New. So once it's nicely sticky, I'm then going to place my embossing powder over and heat set it till it's nice and shiny. There was a little bit of stray powder on the flower, but that didn't matter. I'm then going to move over to the block print stamp set and I'm going to use this beautiful pattern here and I'm going to pop it into position over my masked image. So this one is the embossed resist. I have done all of the leaves and I'm then just going to ink up this pattern using the beautiful limestone gray ink. I love this gray. It's such a beautiful soft gray and it works really really well. So I'm just going to pop this down and you're going to need to give this a really good squidge. So I do put a lot of pressure when going onto this because I am trying to stamp around that embossing that we have down. Once I've done that I'm just going to get rid of the ink off this one using a little bit of tissue paper. I'm then going to add the masks over this red flower again. These are the coordinating dye ink uh, masks. So I've just done the same with the leaves just by cutting some sticky tape with the coordinating dye. And I, as I said, my sticky isn't as sticky anymore. So I did add a little bit of the Ulta New glue just to keep these masks in place. Again, I'm using the same background and the same limestone ink to stamp over this. So I've just inked it up and then I'm going to squidge this down again because we're trying to get around those masks. You may want to press a little bit harder than you used to when you do stamp normally. So once I remove all these masks, you can see how beautiful that does look. This one I've done the same. So I fussy cut the flower as before and then I fussy cut the leaves as well. Again, I'm just going to add a little bit of the Ulta New tape behind these masks just to keep them in perfect position because my sticky notes are really not that sticky. So I'm just going to add these into place. I'm just adding a tiny bit of the Ulta New tape glue. I'm just going to take some of the stick off using my fingers and the back of my hand and just to keep them in place. Again, I'm using the same background with the same ink. And again, you are going to need to give this a really good squidge to get around that masking paper a little bit. So because it's a little bit higher, you do need to press a little bit more just to get it around. So to finish the cards, I just added some sentiments again from the Hope stamp set. And you can see how different these masking techniques look. So with the fussy cutting, you don't get an, a white edge around the outside of the flowers, but with the coordinating dies, you do. So this does help it pop a little bit more from the background. But if you're after a more close look, maybe the fussy cutting or this one is for you. So the emboss resist doesn't give a line around the outside either, but it does make your in image a little bit shiny so if you're not after that look I would go for the fussy cutting but it's totally up to you the 
one with the coordinating die really, really does save time. So here are all the cards. I really do hope that you've enjoyed all of the techniques and that you do give them a go. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again really, really soon. If you want to watch any more videos that we do upload to the channel, it would be great if you do subscribe and there's a couple more here if you want to. See you soon. Bye-bye.